Welcome to the Discovery Doc Podcast, where we advocate for optimal wellness and reducing everyday toxic loads, no matter where life takes you. I'm Dr. Cece, doctor in nursing practice, self-proclaimed toxin tamer, and a crunchy mama. I'm Anna Kate, a medical mystery overachiever and your discovery liaison. Join us on this exciting journey as we explore the world of holistic health, cutting edge research, and practical solutions for a healthier life. Together, we'll navigate through the complexities of wellness, sharing valuable insights, and expert advice. Tune in to the Discovery Doc Podcast. Get ready to be inspired, empowered, and discover a whole new way of looking at your health. Welcome back to the Discovery Doc Podcast. I'm here with your host, Dr. Cece, functional medicine nurse practitioner, self-proclaimed toxin tamer, and crunchy mama of soon to be four, and my co-host over here. I'm Anna Kate, your medical mystery overachiever and discovery liaison. And again, we have another guest who is absolutely brilliant and gorgeous and all the things. So will you introduce our fabulous guest that's on the screen with us if you're watching on YouTube? Well, this is Miss Tori. Everybody say hello. And Tori is a holistic realtor that's really committed to helping anybody in the area find your perfect, healthy home that sanctuary where your body and soul and mind can just thrive. And so as we dive into this month of non-toxic living, we're really excited to get Tori on board to talk to us about finding a home and what kind of stipulations that we should be looking for to before we even purchase a home. So we are so excited, Tori, to have you. I'm going to kind of give you the floor for a minute. I would love for you to let our community know just who you are, how did you get to be where you are in life and provide this amazing service to families here locally? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. And it's definitely been a journey as all of our holistic crunchy mamas know, we have to start somewhere. So my why was over 20 years ago, my now 29 year old, it's so hard for me to say, like I have a 29 year old, really? Um, When she was seven, she started having some more ADHD, you you know, just some of that type of different, yeah, different things that was coming out. And the doctor had suggested medication back then, 20 years ago, we really didn't have a lot of, you know, technology. We didn't have podcasts. We didn't have internet. We didn't have this back in like 1999 and 2000. And so I just had to slowly learn and taking things away as her symptoms, you know, were kind of showing up chemicals in the home and, and different, you know, our diets and and everything like that just slowly got me into this and it just kept going and going and going. And she started getting better as I'm making her school lunches as I'm throwing out all the cleaning products in the home, as I'm investigating mold and toxins and the environment, she started getting better. And I just kept going and it just, you know, that's where I'm at today. But we wanted to buy a house and I couldn't find a realtor that would kind of align. And I was having questions and they really didn't understand a lot that I had concerns about. So my husband had the bright idea, why don't you go get the real estate license so you can kind of navigate for our family. And that's where it began. And as soon as I did, I had friends just say, hey, Tori, will you help me? And it just kind of kept going. Wow, that is amazing. So one thing I was thinking of while you're speaking is something that I I think this is a really cool question. Something that I always think about because when my mom makes fun of me of like, Hey, I, she, like when we were growing up, we didn't have fast food. You know, she was, she made all of our food. She was very conscientious, but it wasn't to the degree that I am. Right. And my defense is always like, well, mom, back then I don't feel like certain things existed that exist now. Right. So I'm so fascinated. What are the, Did you see that like back 20 years ago, did you see these chemicals that are in everything now? Was it as quote as bad as it is now? Or have you seen this progression of it worsening? Definitely progress. But in the nineties, when the, when the girls were born, you still had the Capri Suns. You still Mm -hmm. had, you know, a lot of those 
all of the red food dye forties and stuff like that in the nineties and the early two thousands as a young mama, you know, I was like, yeah. oh, you know, that's what's at the grocery store is, you know, all those little fruit drinks, not understanding loaded with sugar, kind of getting her started with all these symptoms of ADHD. Yeah. And, but once I started pulling all that back, wow, she started, you know, focusing better. And I really didn't really dive into the supplements and really get into that until a little bit later because, you know, without internet and nobody telling you really what to expect, you just have to kind of figure it out on your own. Right. So, yeah. Right. So as you've kind of progressed in this career, which is amazing because it's so unique, there is nobody who does this, which is why I love you so much. It's just, it's such a needed service because your home is where you spend arguably the most time. And so making sure that your home is safe and a healthy environment for you and your family is so pertinent. And I just don't think it even crosses people's minds when they're purchasing a new home. So diving down kind of the world of non-toxic living can be very, very overwhelming, but what, where should new homeowners start? What are some kind of non-negotiables when entering a new home? That is such a great question. And I would say that it starts, you know, with me, I like to have conversations with my buyers or sellers. And I have a lot of past expo mold exposure families, mm -hmm. chemical sensitivity families, lung cancer survivors. I've got cystic fibrosis. I have a lot of respiratory COPD people that come mm -hmm. to me and say, Tori, I can't even see a home that has those fake plugins. I will react. So it starts with it, having that conversation, you know, what's going on with your family? What are we trying to accomplish? What is our concerns? And I will first you know, do a little assess for, okay, do we have a seller disclosure? Has there been past water exposures? Has there been, you know, anything in the home that I need to be concerned with? Um, before we even see it, it might not even get to the list that we even, you know, have to see it because of mm -hmm. something that I find. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot there just to get, you know, into the property. And then of course, when we go look at the house, I like to, you know, do look around. I have some little tools that I always bring with me. I always bring a humidity meter. I love to know what the humidity in the home is. Um, Cause you know, mold can exist without just, you know, a water exposure, you know, we could have some humidity that's really bad. So, and I like to look around under cabinets everyone's walking around uh, looking at, I tell them, go look at the floor plan. Let's see what you like. And then I'm kind of over here on the end looking for cracks. I'm over here looking for, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm assessing. And then we kind of meet back and let me know what you think. And they're like, yeah, this or that. And then I'll say, well, I found this kind of in the bathroom, you know, nothing to really alarm you about, but I want you to know if you want to move forward with an offer, we're going to really, investigate this you know there's something here that could be something could not be something but let's you know get some extra people out maybe there's a crack somewhere that I want to make sure there's not a foundation issue right maybe there's some staining that wasn't on a disclosure that I need to get answers for mm -hmm. yeah have you ever heard of something like a realtor doing this? Seriously. <laughs> no, but I wish that she would have been around when Mark bought our house. Right. And I'm like, we're, we're about to do renovations. I'm like, Tori, you're going to be here every day. Yeah. <laughs> I would yeah. Love yeah. It. Make, oh make it gosh. happen. It's, it's such a passion and such my jam. Like I eat, breathe and live healthy homes, everything, mm -hmm. you know, and if I don't know something, I'm going to investigate it. I'm going to figure it out mm -hmm. because I just love it. I, I became building biology advocate certified. I love building biology. It's the holistic wellness of a home. And it's just, it's, it's just amazing. Like we, we breathe and this is where we're raising our babies and we're creating memories here. It can be a wonderful thing. It can also make us so sick and toxic if yes. we're living in a bad environment. 
Yeah. Right? And oftentimes people don't know it until they become symptomatic. Exactly. And then they start putting the puzzle pieces together of, whoa, I feel much better when I was just on vacation for 10 days and outside of my home. And then I come back to my home and I don't feel good. But by that point, yeah. now we need intervention mm -hmm. instead of where you come in and you can prevent all that from happening, which is amazing. So speaking of mold specifically, because yes, it's a huge problem. Yes. And you know, I have a lot of patients with mold toxicity and it can range from looking like a kiddo who just gets sick all the time recurrently to a baby with severe eczema mm -hmm. to a mom with reproductive issues right. and everything in between. And so what are your recommendations for testing or for addressing any issues that are found quickly? So, you know, I have that conversation. I like to talk to my clients before we even do the home inspection. I like to negotiate a good due diligence period. And I always make it, you know, very known that we will be doing a mold inspection. And I haven't really found anybody that says, I don't want to do a mold inspection unless they're an investor and they're going to, you know, remediate and take care of the house anyway. But, but for the most family members, we will have a conversation. Some families love the air quality. They would rather prefer to do an air quality. Some parents and some families just love the ERMI test. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had some people will do tape tests. They all have their place. And each home and each situation is different. Um, some people, you know, some people want a mold dog come out. That's the a new thing that has. I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> I bet it's the DSP that does it too. They're so sensitive. Their nose, yeah. They're so I have I have dermatoid hair pointers. So they're the drug dogs at the Atlanta airport. Yeah, yeah. So they're and you can't say hi to them because they're so cute. But I like so in our house we had the dogs and we had um, water come in our back door and my husband was like, yeah, there's mold in every house and I said, no, this is something different because it made me super symptomatic with all the other stuff that I had going on, neurological issues with mold. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was under the carpet. There was black mold behind bookcases. Yeah. And so I had to get out of there when he remodeled our, our downstairs living room, but he ripped it all out, put in new um, sheetrock and like the whole nine yards. And I was like, there's something here that is mm -hmm. like, right. it's messing with me and I can't put my finger on it. Yep. with all this so neurologically like and now i can't go into a mildew musty environment without i mean i can go in for about two seconds yeah. and yep. you know it right away right you react I, it is so incredible how sensitive we can become to those things and then when you walk into somewhere else and you're like oh this is off i don't feel like and yeah. your body's like run away please yes. run away please yeah. move out of the space yes. so but it's so for those that aren't sensitive to it, it can be a point of, oh, well, we don't need to do this now, or we can wait until we do the rest of the remodel. But for those that are sensitive to it and have other issues, mm -hmm. it is highly important. Can you tell us why it's so highly important not to live in a toxic mold environment for the entire health of the family? Yes. I mean, this is what a lot of people will say. And I, my challenge is when I have, and I'll, I'll have lab results. And I will present this to the listing agent and they'll say, oh, it's no big deal, Tori. You know, we'll, you know, everybody wants to put bleach on it or, you know, mm -hmm. not, you know, and it really is a struggle. So educating and having conversations, sometimes I've even had, it has been more common lately, I'll actually have that mold company or who did the test, reach out to the listing agent and have conversations and try to, you know, share with them so I can negotiate. I've been, I have been very fortunate. I have been getting a lot of negotiations um, done. And my last one was at East Cobb House. And I did get around $5,000 worth of negotiated on, on some of the repairs and some things that needed to be done. So I felt like that was a huge win for us. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but this family super, like you said, super sensitive and people just don't realize living in a home with those microtoxins, 
can just cause so many, so many issues long term. You might think, oh, well, you know, I don't really react or whatever, but over time, what exactly. is that going to do and, and hinder your immune system to fight off? And, and it's just, it's, it's just so bad. It's just so bad. It's, it's so many things can come about this. Right. And for those of you who don't know, mycotoxins are basically the byproducts of fungus. So they're a byproduct of mold. They're like the little babies, the spores. And there are, it is true, there are, some of them are naturally occurring, but there is a normal, quote, normal reference range for a reason. Once you are outside of that, that is a toxic level and your cells hold on to that. Your body holds on to that. And everybody genetically is very different. So I, I get this question a lot where it's like, well, yeah, we have mold in the house, but I'm okay. And my husband's okay. And the kids are kind of the only ones that have issues. Like, why would that be a thing if it was just the mold? And I'm like, because everybody is different. Yeah. Your genetics are different from your husband or your spouse or your child, you know, your methylation pathways, your detox yeah. pathways, what you have going on internally is so different that it can look very, very different from one family member to the next. Yeah. And there is no world in which it can be beneficial to exactly. be surrounded by <clears throat> those mycotoxins. Because you're right, over time, the how toxic they are, every single one of them are immunosuppressive. Mm -hmm. So they break apart our T cells, our B cells, they limit our white blood cells to be able to do their job appropriately. So you might be okay now, but what does that look like five years from now? Yeah. Right? So and being in that mycotoxin environment and then using a uh, chemical air freshener right. on top of <laughs> right. it to, to, yes. to mask that smell. So it may not be the mold. It may be the air fresheners that are causing an issue mm -hmm. and respiratory, up, upper respiratory mm -hmm. issues. And sorry, Tori, go Absolutely. ahead. Absolutely. <laughs> go for it. 100%. That, you guys just hit the nail on the head between, the, I mean, there's so much when you get into that with, then you've got the chemicals in the homes. You know, people, you know, that's when I try to educate them. And when we, when we close, I give air doctors, I give brain oh, face what? picks. I know. Yay. That is amazing. It is. It's so, you know, I want to, I want to, you know, in, give them the tools they need to get started on their new home journey, healthy home yeah. journey. And everybody deserves this. And we're all on different levels. You know, I've got people that have come to me that have researched and that are super educated. And then I've got people that are just trying to figure things out. They know they want a healthy home and they want a realtor to fight for them and to do some things that other, you know, realtors may not ask or questions. And it's just so important to, um, to listen and care for, for everybody. And I just, mm -hmm. I just look at it to where if I was the one buying the house, you know, I just go into it like, this is yeah. my house. This is what I would want. And, and then I'm good. Everybody wins. <laughs> you know, what's crazy about this conversation is I'm coming to this realization. So when we we're living in Florida and you know, Florida is just a mold infested oh, place. Yeah. <laughs> Love it dearly, but it's just very moldy. That is when I started getting sick, but it wasn't until like I started before we were in townhouses and apartments and all of that. But when I took a turn for the most worst, so to speak, was when we moved into our first home. And um, I mean, I would say two weeks into moving into our home, my husband was upstairs showering and I was outside which, with Ava. We only had one kid at the time and I was pregnant with Jackson and we see water. I see water just coming down the outside of our house from that shower that was turned on. Oh my God. And I was like, what the hey? Like this, <laughs> we just moved in literally two days ago. Yeah. This would not be happening. And I messaged the homeowner and she was just like, oh, here's the plumber that we use, you know, because I didn't have any other right. resources right. or somebody who should have maybe caught that because right. I highly doubt it was just happened when we moved in. Yeah. Where was the inspector on that one? Exactly. Right. And we had somebody come out. Now that I look, look back, I'm like, oh, my goodness, this all makes sense mm -hmm. because we had someone come out and they didn't even open up that wall. Not at all. They just fixed the leak in the upstairs shower and that was it. I'm like, holy moly. It was right after that I had Jackson that everything tanked. Yeah. 
oldy moldy shower yeah. wall. Yeah. That's, but that's crazy. crazy. It's crazy. That wasn't found. And so I'm so thankful for someone like you where these new, home, especially like first time home buyers, you know, we don't know what to look for. We have no idea. We're just like, oh, this is pretty. I like this. Exactly. They worry about the floor plan and what's functional. And yeah. another thing I want to touch on are crawl spaces a little bit. That is such, oh my goodness. Those are hard because I find, I just find, you know, that needs, that needs extra attention and extra, mm -hmm. you know, inspections and testing and, and all of that. That's, that's a big, a big one that I find. Um, but you can, they have great dehumidifiers and you can encapsulate them. And there's, there's things that you can do. So don't be scared. If you have a house and you're sitting here listening to me, oh my gosh, I got a crawl space. Don't panic. But I would definitely make sure you get someone out there, you know, get it tested, get it looked at, get it inspected, and maybe look at doing an investment and getting a dehumidifier down there making mm -hmm. sure, you know, with humidity, you know, you want it, I like to say under 45, I like it to be between 30 and 40 is ideal, good humidity in those spaces. So get it, get that, you know, and don't, don't be scared, just be empowered and educated and have that mm -hmm. knowledge and confidence. You know what? We might have an issue. I don't want people to panic and, you know, start having, you know, more anxiety because it can, it can be very stressful, especially yeah. if you're living in a house or thinking about buying a house. I don't want you to have that because it will be fine. We will find you a good, healthy home or we can, you know, I can help you or we can talk about things to help you that are in your home now, you know, to maybe make it better and healthier, the one that you're in. Yeah, absolutely. And more on kind of the preventative side, you met, you mentioned the humidity and moisture. Are there other things that homeowners, once you're in the house, that we can do as maintenance to help prevent mold from building up? Absolutely. I love roof inspections. I think you can't see when a shingle has been blown off. You don't know what's going on on the top of your roof. So reach out to a roof company, have them come up there and assess, you know, are any of those um, roof caps, are they rusted? Are there anything around that chimney? Is there water getting in and possibly going down through the chimney? Um, and having a good chimney inspection is really, really good as well um, because those are water intrusion areas. I love that. Mm -hmm. Of course, basements, keep an eye on your basements, you know, mm -hmm. keep that humidity low. Um, and th those are, those are things, but also I want to, um, when you look at your house and when there is maybe water settling around that foundation, you want to make sure that you are great, having it graded away from the house, right? You want that water to run away. If you're mm -hmm. sitting there and that water is, you know, coming towards a garage or, you know, an area, you're going to have water. You want it, you know, to be graded away from the house. Those are things to look at that I yeah. think is good. Yep. Well, we, we took out the back, the, where it was coming in the house and totally d yep. gutted all That's of that. That's what was and, happening to her house. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it would just, it would rain and it would like when we have heavy rains in Georgia, if the pipes got over, we put in new pipes, we put in French yeah. drains to go, you know, away from the house. And when we finally put our patio down, that'll all get regraded again as yeah. well, but it would just come in and it would make yep. that carpet wet. And yep. we got a new chimney a couple of years ago because water damage from that on the outside of the house and all just kinds of crazy stuff. So I kind of was like, Hey, we got to get rid of all of this, yeah. which is why we don't have carpet anymore. Yeah. Um, that's what about bathrooms? Yes. Okay. So bathrooms, you know, obviously you want to make sure that you have a, the vent fan turned on and sometimes we do see some issues that it will vent up to the attic so that's where your inspector needs to really evaluate because some of that humidity could come up into the mm -hmm. attic so you want to make sure that it's ventilated properly you want to make sure and this is a huge thing for easy homeowners can do go around your shower that caulking that water is just going down into 
you know, underneath there. You want to make sure that you keep your caulking and that shower area nice and secure. And also in the kitchen too, you know, we have that kitchen when you're washing dishes, it can splash up behind the sink. Just make sure that you're sealing and looking at things around the house and also around windows. You know, we sometimes older homes have those wooden, you know, wooden windows. When I'm showing mm -hmm. them sometimes people haven't maintained it. They haven't painted them and they're all rotten and that's going mm -hmm. into, you know, the siding and into the, the drywall and really just, you know, maintaining your home looking at it, pressure washing it, getting, you know, some of that green funk off of it, you know, um, just keeping your home healthy and, and make sure another thing, are you changing your HVAC filters? Oh my gosh. You'll be surprised on how many home inspections that I see. They will pull it out and that thing is black. And one of them the other day said, I don't even know, has this ever even been changed? It was so Ugh, like I was like, oh, okay. So, and, and try to get inspected, you know, make sure that there's no water leaks because a lot of homes, their HVAC system is in their attic. Well, there could mm -hmm. be a slow leak dripping, just going on down the water inside the walls. And you've got that little drip happening for a year or so, and you're not feeling well. Well, guess what? You've got water inside your walls. So really, you know, just really assess that having, you know, it's basically just maintenance. I like to have my HVAC, you know, checked out right before summertime, make sure that, mm -hmm. you know, it's good. And then in wintertime, it's good to have some people do it twice a year just to catch anything that might be happening. Yeah. So what do you recommend I'm making a mental list? Yes. Okay. What yeah. do you, I was once quick. She can answer this one quick. Yeah. What do you recommend as indoor humidity? Because your house lives outside, but you live inside your house, but your house lives outside. So we have to remember that as well. Cause in the South it's either hot or humid or cold and it's not super mm -hmm. always dry. So we don't have time for things to, so if you're in Arizona, okay, quick pause y'all just to show our sponsor some love for their support. Did you know that there's different stages to the common cold? My go-to product for those pesky symptoms is Cold Calm by Boron. These melt-away tablets made with pure active ingredients target sneezing, runny nose, and congestion at every single stage. I love that they're non-drowsy and phenylephrine free. Plus, they melt in your mouth without any water. Visit boronusa.com and use coupon code thediscoverydoc1 for 20% off your order of Cold Calm. While you're there, explore other winter essentials by Boron, including Ocelococcinum and Throat Calm. Claims are based on traditional homeopathic practice, not accepted medical evidence, not FDA evaluated. All right, let's jump back into our conversation. Uh, so if you're in Arizona, mold is not an issue. It's right. so dry out there. Right. But what is, what's the internal indoor humidity is your preference range? I mean, I, we like it under 50. So what you want to do also is check with your, if you're having a humidity problem, it feels sticky, talk to an HVAC company. They can actually add extra dehumidifiers on your systems. Um, there is some really good companies out there. Um, I know Mead Indoor Air, he's a building biologist and he really, you know, comes in and, and can do a lot too, but you really do want to make sure and then keep the air flowing, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, what do they do when they go on vacation? Let's turn our air conditioning off. Please don't turn your air conditioning off. Let you want to keep it flowing. And you know, it's so great to open up those windows and doors. You mm -hmm. really want fresh air in our house. You know, we're all you know, we've got these nice, you know, energy efficient homes. We all want, you know, all of that. Well, sometimes energy efficient is not so great because it's so tight. You're in this mm. tight house. That's just kind of, and you're sitting here breathing all these great chemicals that your brain, you're like, you got your Lysol, your plugins. <laughs> it's like, oh, and we're wondering why we're all, you know, congested and, you know, chemicals and, and all that. So try to open up your windows and letting some fresh air in. I do love that, but you do want to keep that humidity intact and, and under 50. Awesome. Another big, 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 big category. 
Our EMFs. Oh. Good old EMF. Yes. All yes. these uh, we have a smart house and so I that's she's going to she's going to get on to me. See, I'm like with us going into construction, I'm like can we have everything hardwired? Is yeah. that too much to ask for? That is um awesome. but with new homeowners or when you are evaluating or assessing a home, yes. what are you using to detect these levels and then what are certain landmarks that buyers can kind of evaluate to to guesstimate their exposure? Oh, such good questions. Okay, so this is, this is a very deep hole, Cece. I know. Yeah, I like I like rabbit holes. Sorry. <laughs> it, there is so much to EMF, and you know, it really just you know, it used to not really be a thing back years ago. It was more like power lines you were concerned about. Now, like you said, everything is smart, and you're just you're just getting hit with EMFs. So, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start with this. I so, know. we have the new amazing 5G towers up everywhere. I mean, I they're like everywhere now. And it's like, you just can't even go around a corner without seeing them. So, I would try to limit, you know, being around those 5G towers. Um, and you can get your own EMF meter. I have a tri-field and I have one from Shielded Healing. Mm -hmm. So um, what I like to do is, you know, when I'm out showing, I like to just kind of assess the area and see what the readings are and just kind of get, a, get an idea. Um, and also we've got the whole dirty electricity and, you know, all of that that's in the walls. Green Wave has great um, meters and I do have a Green Wave. I test, I can plug it in. And I can know, you know, if it needs a filter, which is filtering um, that coming out of the walls. So there's some great filters and testing from Green Wave. That's a great website. You can look that up. But so, so that's one thing. But a lot of people don't know this. Unplugging your lamp. I've noticed when I'm in and I'm looking at homes and I have my EMF meter, if I'm testing around your headboard, and you unplug that lamp, that goes way down. Just having something plugged in by your head. So mm -hmm. a lot of families, when they have their little toddlers, you know, they'll not have lamps or try to keep them away from a plug-in, right? Try to move that baby bed or, you know, move it away that there's not that electrical outlet like right there by their head. And maybe sometimes they'll pull it away from the wall. Those are good techniques that I like to, to tell people little tips that I have found. Um, and if you can unplug your Wi-Fi, but I know how hard that is. And I don't even try to fight with that anymore because everybody's got, the, you know, everybody's got the security cameras now that's on Wi-Fi. So. I've already failed Tori because <laughs> I have my, we have our lights and things on remotes yeah. so that when we come home, we don't have to come home to our dark house mm -hmm. or like, you know, we have an arrive home and in a way, so it locks our doors and yeah. does like all kinds of cool stuff. So, um, she's our, I fail. I fail the, the story <laughs> yeah. oh my for God. sure. Yeah. But it does make, it does make a difference. And, yeah. you know, we're sitting in front of a computer and we've got lights and we've got our microphones and all that stuff. And it's a rainy, gloomy day here in Atlanta. So usually we go out and walk on the grass after and get, get back right. grounded and get, you know, get those things. But the, the good thing is there are things that you can do. And I know like for me, I'm very sensitive. And when we moved into our office in February, my new office, the they put the router and all of the internet stuff in the office that I spend the most time in. And there's also a smart meter outside of that wall. And so uh, like two or two or three months go by and I'm sitting in that office and every single time I'd be in front of a patient and my whole body would just go mm -hmm. like this big mm -hmm. whoosh. And I was getting super dizzy and I was getting floaters and I was feeling nauseous. And then I would go into the other office that I see patients in and be totally fine. And I'm like, you guys, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I need, I, there's something in this room. I think yep. it has to do with like EMF yep. and I'm like, I will not sit in here <laughs> until yep. we figure it out. And so, <clears throat> 
excuse me, we actually had a, a patient of ours come in with one of those EMF detectors and he kind of went around and he was like, holy moly, it was yep. just off the charts in that office. Yep. And so we actually had AT&T come out and reroute the entire office building. Perfect. And he was like, is, is something wrong with the internet? And I'm like, no, I just don't want it in here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want the we, EMS in we, this room. We need to move this. And he right. thought we were so crazy because then they had to rewire and dig and do all this stuff. And so we put it as far as we could where no patients are around, where we yeah. hardly go in a corner. Right. And I no longer get dizzy in that office, yep. no longer have floaters. But it's just wild that something like that can impact you. And it's something that most people wouldn't think of. Oh, maybe it's my internet. Yeah, maybe it's you all know? the things that are plugged in around me because yeah. we're so connected yep. all the time. So we can't unplug and yeah. unconnect. That's right. unrealistic. So what are the things that we can do to either shield our EMF? She's got a shield mm -hmm. on her computer. Yes. Um, like what are the, some of the things that we can do for our, our person and for our home. Like how do we, how protect do we ourselves. protect ourselves and mitigate, um, you know, especially if it's the like EMF. our dream home and it's right next to a 5g tower. Yes. Like what do you do for those homeowners that are like, but we want this house. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. So there, there are things that you can get into. They do have shielded paint that is for somebody that, you know, maybe just wants this house and there's just a tower right there. You know, that's one thing. And another thing that you can, you know, you can look at doing is there's some great by, you know, safe sleeve. They have these, you know, the computer, they actually have also the blankets, you know, for, for, for that. But there's also a low EMF Wi-Fi router. Um, I can post about that. And I'm sure you could look that up too if you just type in a low EMF Wi-Fi router. Now, my son, would, you know, I told him about it. He's like, Mom, it's probably going to be slower. It's going to mess up with my gaming, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the important things in life. Right. Exactly. So that might be a family fight with that. But there are some options But I love. And this is what I tell people. You know, we have to live around it. Put your Wi-Fi router you know, put it in a closet, put it somewhere mm -hmm. in the house. Ours is like the very corner of the, nobody's up there, put it up there. Um, and, you know, if you can, you know, just try to, you know, limit, you know, being um, in front of, you know, a lot of the computers, you know, with the kids and screen times, there's things you can do, but there's also other, you know, some people are doing, which we haven't done. And I don't know if we ever will do is they have those little nettings, you know, that you can actually net and put, you know, for the EMF blockers. Um, some people it looks like a mosquito net. I have a net over our router. <laughs> I do. Yes. I, it's in a closet. It's in our utility closet with a net around it. <laughs> Absolutely. And that, you know, there's also EMF, you know, c c uh, almost Faraday cages for our router. So there's mm -hmm. that. Um, also, a lot of clients will buy the smart meter caps there's like a, it's like a Faraday cage you can put on that um if you can't do analog some sometimes you can call like your power company and say hey can you remove this but it is a cost to that but another problem is some people are you know want their privacy they're gonna have to come out and check every month so some people are like oh I live on a couple acres I don't want the power right. company coming out to my land and looking at my meter at some random time of the day. So, you know, there's, there's that, but limiting like the exposure and finding out, you know, where is your smart meter in the house? Right. Um, and, and covering it up with the, you know, they have those silver cloths and, and making that some people, which I have heard have worked really good. And we have one, you can actually do some grounding sheets, half grounding sheets and the pillowcases. Of course, I prefer grounding on your feet, organic with no pesticides, but you also have to be careful going out to somewhere and they're just sprayed it with all these chemicals. And you're walking around barefoot absorbing all that. Right. Um, <laughs> we do. We have grounding sheets also. I'm just yep. crazy, but we have, we have grounding sheets. I have them on all the beds. I have like a grounding mat. Yeah. And then a grounding sheet on top of that. 
And I personally noticed, I mean, I did it because I was having these crazy waves of insomnia that I've never had before. And I was like, huh, I wonder if, and it's so interesting because I don't, common sense to me is don't plug in your phone by your head, right? right? right. Like we all know that and I don't do that, but I still have my essential oil diffuser me, plugged in and I have my lamp plugged in. Yeah. And so I was like, huh, and so there's still all these cords right, right yeah. there. Yeah. And since we've been on the grounding mat, I mean, it's been probably a year now. Yeah. I sleep so much better. It really yeah, so I, mm -hmm. yeah. I have a grounding pillowcase and I put it, uh, Mark kills me every time. He's like, if we, if the house gets struck by lightning, it's going to set our bed on fire. And I'm like, it's a, it's a grounding. He's like, do you know what happened? I'm like, so I'm fighting that at home of like, dude, it's just a pillowcase. And I, he's like, he won't let me put it under the sheet where I sleep. And when I have it, it, makes me feel better. But I also have my electric blanket to keep me warm when it's cold. So there's that. And then, okay. So I'm plugging in my, my, um, infrared therapy I know. mat. Oh, I know. It's how like, do you, how do you, so, well, some, some mats have good yes. EMF blockers built in. Okay. Yep. That's what I was going to say. And also, no. why don't you get rid of your electric blankets? Are, oh, I want to tell you, they're so bad. Like, that's like. The, I bet. <laughs> they're so bad. Okay. I told you, I will fail. Yeah, you're so <laughs> failing. So I would swap that out for the. Life goals. It's like, it's like a <laughs> mat. You can get them off Amazon for $150. They're made with gemstones. It's more like a heating pad. Mm -hmm. But the bio mat really helps put you to sleep. I mean, I will go lay on them when I'm at the chiropractor. I'll lay in a red light bed, which is low EMF. And then you can lay on those bio mats with, they have the gemstones on them. And it mm -hmm. really, I mean, it makes a difference. So if you're getting cold, I would say buy that bio mat and lay on it to keep you warm. And you're having the gemstones and you're having all that yep. heated regulation without having the, all that, you're just sitting under a little, like yeah, I, I, I use my, my EMF. I mean, my, um, my bio mat on the couch. Cause that's what my infrared mat is. And then I have my infrared sauna. So she's about to I know. <laughs> naughty, naughty, <laughs> but I'm doing, I'm right where I am and I'm doing, I'm doing what I can do. Exactly. Exactly. So that is, that is true. She's throwing shade over here. We're so work on getting rid of the the that uh, that uh, that blanket, the electric blanket. I would say try to try to get rid of that. If you could get rid of one thing in 2024, try to do that. Okay. Goal. Done. Goal. <laughs> I'm saying done like it's me. Yeah. Done. done. Well, get rid of go there and throw it out. Get rid of the Raynods and why I'm cold all the time. Right. And help keep my fingers from hurting and Great. falling off. No so pressure. fix that problem. No pressure on And I'll mind. get rid of the blanket. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so before we kind of wrap up this part, and you guys, we have part two, or we're going to continue this conversation with Tori and dive deeper into renovations, which I'm super excited about, and non-toxic materials that we can use, and radon, and VOCs, and all these crazy things. So stay tuned for part two. But before we do, where can our community find you and reach you? Any special shout outs that you would like to give also? Oh, yes. I mean, I think the best way I have a lot of information on my website at Atlanta holistic realtor.com. I've got resources. I have free wellness real estate magazine on there. If you go to the website, it's tons of information and then you can go in and actually look at maybe some local vendors that align with more of the wellness healthy home movement um so if you're looking for a vendor they might be on the list so reach out and take a look at that and all my contact information is on there and yeah i'd love to connect with you and answer any questions you might have yeah, and we'll make sure that all of those links are in the show notes on YouTube and make sure that you can get um, connected with Tori. And if you're not in the Atlanta area, please reach out to Tori because she can give you insights on who to contact or yep. what to look for in other companies in the area that you are living in. So stick around for our next episode, which will come out. Um, I don't know. The next <laughs> It'll either be a Tuesday or a Thursday. So stay, one. <laughs> stay tuned for the next one. And until next time, let's, let's discover together. together. We hope you've enjoyed this journey of exploration and learning as much as we have. Before you go, we have a special request for you, our beloved discoverers. 
We'd be thrilled if you could show your support in a few easy steps. Step one, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to ring that notification bell so you never miss a moment of discovery. Step two, if you're listening via Apple Podcasts, please take a moment to rate and review our show. Your feedback means the world to us and helps others discover our podcast too. Step three, whether you're on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast platform, please share the Discovery Doc podcast with your friends, family, and social networks. It's the best way to spread the joy of discovery. And finally, don't forget to follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at The Discovery Doc. Stay connected with us for updates, behind the scenes content, and so much more. Plus, for exclusive content and additional resources, be sure to check out our website at www.thediscoverydoc.com. And while you're there, if you have a burning question or a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show, simply let us know. Thank you, Discoverers, for being part of our incredible journey. Until next time, let's discover together. The content provided in this podcast provides general information and discussions on various topics related to health, wellness, and medical advancements. However, it is essential to understand that the content provided in this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The hosts, guests, and contributors are individuals sharing their personal experiences, opinions, and knowledge in their respective fields. While they strive to provide accurate, up-to-date information, medical knowledge is constantly evolving and the information presented in this podcast may not always reflect the most current research and medical guidelines. It is crucial to consult with a qualified healthcare professional or medical expert for specific medical concerns. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay seeking medical treatment based on the information presented in this podcast. The Discovery Doc podcast encourages listeners to use their own judgment and discretion while implementing any suggestions, recommendations, or lifestyle changes discussed in this episode. Each individual's medical situation is unique and may work for one, may not be suitable or safe for another. The podcast hosts, guests, and contributors are not liable for any direct, indirect, consequential, or incidental damages or harm that may arise from listening or acting upon the information provided in this podcast. Listeners are responsible for their own health decisions and should exercise caution and seek professional guidance when necessary. By listening to this podcast, you acknowledge that you have read, understood, and agreed to this medical disclaimer. If you have any questions or concerns about this medical disclaimer, please consult a qualified healthcare professional.